join me on this thought exercise. It's just that for the past six months, I have been going. I have been physically moving through space in a more significant way than I have in the prior years of my PhD in ethnomusicology, which I began in the fall of 2019. I have been living in Europe, Portugal specifically, while visiting other European countries and going back to the US for research presentations and other obligations. I've been traveling, but before this period, I was doing this mentally through my work, developing an imagined landscape in the Azores before I was actually able to visit in 2021. I envisioned the weather, the buildings, the people, the landscape, and of course, the sounds. I searched online, visiting numerous websites and reading articles, which still presented a scant idea of the total experience. But this imagined space shaped my initial narratives and motivated me to press forward with my research objectives. So I just wanted to take a moment to unpack some of the sounds I've heard, sights I've seen, sensations I've experienced, and thoughts that have danced in my head. I'm going to focus on presence as a theme in this exercise. I've been meditating on presence a lot lately. So presence as in the reality of being present or existing in a space. With presence, I understand the island as a sensorial reality that is constantly changing and potentially further complicated by my presence. Presentation can aid in creating a sense of presence, allowing individuals to imagine the reality of a space without their bodily existence in that space. The media that is disseminated about a region, like the Azores, effectively narrates it for potential visitors, something that can occur intentionally or unintentionally as a decolonial mapping catering to particular sociocultural realities in the region and, too often younger, individuals who actively engage in social media. It is through engagement like this, mainly on Instagram and Facebook, that I received glimpses of the people in Sao Miguel of their nature and their values relating to musical engagement as an extension of their cultural and Catholic identities. Completing fieldwork is a common aspect of ethnomusicological research that presents a diverse array of spatial and temporal sensations within a brief period. For many, the COVID-19 pandemic and subsequent lockdown brought travel to a halt, causing researchers to diversify approaches for data collection to complete their projects. The field was liberated, and the techno-cultural reality of our present existence dictates that all fieldwork has some component that is virtual or is hybrid in nature. In my situation, the pandemic meant completing a virtual ethnography prior to my preliminary visit to Sao Miguel. When I arrived in September 2021, I carried with me the knowledge of a handful of individuals and events and the common meteorological trope that in the Azores you can experience all four seasons in a day. So I brought a heavy jacket, good shoes, and a poncho. Outside of tangible objects of preparedness, I lacked knowledge of the cultural shock I would experience in the region while visiting for a short period, something that has changed since living here, although there are aspects of this that linger. I want to talk about the field. I want to talk about how we envision it when we are eager students, when we are present in the field, and when we have left the field. At some point in these three stages, the field becomes less distant as a construct and more present as a perception of accessible, knowable information relative to our experience. It loses its foreign being as our intention is to learn and be of it, or maybe this is just my experience. 
It also changes us and may cause us to look at ourselves in different ways. This was unexpected, but appreciated. Residing in Punta Delgada, the largest municipality in Sao Miguel, I see and know people here and I am similarly seen and known by them. This is the nature of the work, of knowing the city of Punta Delgada and experiencing the resistance of what it is against who I am. By resistance, mm, I'm thinking of cultural friction. Rivera Cervera's theory of practice for understanding queer Latinidad, something bound by place, communicated through racial or ethnic difference, and negotiated through the rippling sociocultural effects of colonialism. I present multiple forms of difference as a bodily reality here, and this friction is both something I have grown accustomed to and continue to struggle with. Although this space is predominantly white, European, Catholic, and heteronormative compared to my Black, Caribbean, Christian, and queer experience, I do not elevate difference to center my discourse on the adverse realities of colonialism, racism, sexism, or xenophobia, and do not address these realities without a specific beneficial function within the work. For example, there's so much popular music here that you would hear in the US, and a lot of jazz and EDM. There are not many black bodies, but there is black sounding in this sense. I'm thinking about how Wahelie tethers Western modernity to sonic blackness and vice versa, contextualizing encounters with auditory blackness as a vehicle for discourse about technocultural practices more than marginality. This objective nature is something I aim to maintain in my work despite some less than savory encounters here. So I'm always thinking about Chang's apt assertion about music's potential as a tool individuals can use to humanize, dehumanize, and superhumanize themselves and others. I often ask myself how or if I'm imposing value of myself or others based on the music they make, engage with, or avoid. I try to remain cognizant of this throughout my work and I recognize my own love for music, how it functions in my life, and why I'm even here studying it, to maintain the healthy practice of interrogating myself as a researcher. Wandering back to presence, this word, presence, is also used to describe the existence of many similar individuals within a place. For example, there is a strong Caribbean presence in South Florida where I grew up, but presence can interestingly address something that is not physically in a space, but still sensed. bodily absence, but sensed in other ways. This is the presence of a spirit, a shadow, or specter. I am interested in all three meanings of presence and intend to weave them into my work in the region. In her exploration of Fado, a famous genre of Portuguese folk song, Gray asks, what might history feel like when rendered and experienced in musical sound? She is asking this question in connection to her work in Lisbon, but I borrow it outside of Fado and in another Portuguese region to situate the act of musicking, which Small describes as any form of active or passive musical participation, to recognize how musical behaviors as extensions of societies and public performance enable individuals to resituate historical scripts within a space or simply challenge historically codified associations. My project is entitled Azorian Acoustomologies. This title immediately presents place, the specific location of the Azorian archipelago in the North Atlantic Ocean. Though many of the themes and musical ideas I focus on throughout the work can and do exist in other spaces and in other cultures. 
The title also alludes to methodology, guided by Feld's acoustomology, a term that joins acoustics and epistemology to approach knowing with and through the audible. I'm thinking about how sounding, silence, hearing, and listening can lead to a particular understanding of a place. In this sense, the work is broad. There is meaning in the music, sound, and noise, which Novak describes as an inescapable sensory experience and meaningful relational concept when navigating the world. Something that is often separated from music as though it cannot exist within it or music cannot be aesthetically pleasing if we believe it to be noisy. I'm thinking about what these terms mean in this region for creators and consumers of music. I consider both traditional and contemporary, religious and secular musical practices through a feminist ethnomusicological lens, contemplating how gendered behaviors exist to reinforce or challenge existing notions of post-colonial Portugueseness on São Miguel and on the other Azorian islands through musical engagement. In this sense, the work is more narrow, especially since it begins in Punta Delgada. I'm looking at a wealth of musical practices, but focusing on the engagement of women and queer performers and patrons, using the work of Black feminist scholars to aid in a socio-cultural critique of post-colonial sonic realities on the island. My gaze is also fixed on the natural environment, a long feminized concept in Portuguese music, and an aspect of complicated engagement with ecotourism, specifically in relation to music festivals. These events piqued my interest most when I initially studied the region, as they are spaces that allow individuals to show collective values, which assists in cultural maintenance and transformation. Alas, I want to end on presence as it holds in its existence the potential to mean one thing and the opposite. Why does this matter sonically? Agar Jones uses sand alongside water to discuss the complexities of transgressive thought around same-sex desire, stating that sand exists as, quote, the point of nature's hesitation between land and sea, end quote, and in between. Unlike her focus on the hidden nature of Afro-Caribbean, lesbian, and gay existence and perspectives, queer individuals on the island are hyper-visual in this space, often existing comfortably but occasionally facing the brunt of anger or disagreement perpetuated by beliefs in dated colonial tropes driven by religious ideals, something, I argue, that is more prominent on the Azorian islands than in mainland Portugal, as insularity is both a strength and a weakness. I have not seen any openly queer individuals performing in traditional musical ensembles like Folklóricos Folios Chovromeiros, especially since the latter two are closely connected to Catholic traditions of the region. Annual festivals like Tremor and Burning Summer effectively bring diversity onto the island, importing it for a temporary period that can have lasting effects. By diversity, I refer to performers of diverse origins, racial and ethnic identities, religion, language, gender, and sexual identities, and bodily ability, among other things. Their performances and their existence on the island humanizes them through musical engagement and can humanize the bodies of individuals like them that may reside on the islands, allowing them to feel seen or understood, further normalizing their existence. They are bringing these individuals out of the closet, which can be a source of oppression or safety motivated by fear, making it a complicated reality. These diverse performances and their performers are momentarily present, but their presence lingers in bodily absence. They have existed in the space and have the potential to make a lasting impact even in their absence. They are shadows the sounding more so than the bodies, but these shadows loom large as a reality of global musical consumption, Azorian musical and cultural identity, and as a catalyst for the formation of futures for women, Afro-Diasporic people, and queer individuals on the islands.